Hello guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easier to understand. We're again looking at a refrigerator, R stands for refrigerator, and on the last video we talked about the co how the coefficient of performance or the efficiency of the refrigerator is defined the same way as an efficiency for a heat engine, right? It's what we want divided by what we put in, what we desire, what, sorry, what we pay, what we have to consume, right? So our desired output, desired, desired output divided by what was consumed. Or in another way to think about it is what you get for, so useful output divided by what you have to pay, right? And we talked about how that for refrigerant, what we want, want to maximize is this arrow here, right? What's coming out of the cold reservoir that we're trying to make even colder. And how what we have to pay for is the work that we're putting generally in the form of electric energy being consumed by a compressor. So for a refrigerator, the coefficient performance is QL or Q low, which is this guy here, Q low, divided by the work. That's put in. And then this is Q high or Q hot as the rejected energy to the environment, which is what happens on the back of your fridge. If you put your hand there, you're going to see that's hot, that's warm, exactly because of that energy that's being um, expelled, let's put it that way, to the environment. Okay, so for this problem here, Problem statement reads, a completely reversible refrigerator is driven by a 10 kilowatt compressor and operates with a thermal energy reservoir at 250, oh, sorry, 250 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin. Calculate the rate of cooling provided by this refrigerator. So note that they don't give us the which one is the high, which one is the low, because it's quite obvious, right? It has to be, this one has to be the 300, and this one has to be the 250, or else we wouldn't need a refrigerator. And the idea is that we want to maximize how much energy we can take away from this 250 reservoir and then minimize how much we have to put in the form of work. But we know the amount of work. We need to put 10 kilowatts. So 10 kilowatts is what's being inputted into the system. We want to know what's the rate of cooling provided. So what we want to know is precisely what is QL. Okay, And for that, we can rely on the fact of the second law, actually we're going to use both first and second law, but the second law of the thermodynamics, which limits the efficiency of this um, of this uh, refrigerator, right? Because the refrigerator is bound, right? It has to be within the boundaries of these reservoirs, right? Because there's only so much energy you can give to this 300 Kelvin, right? Okay, so how can I do that? Well. I know that the coefficient of performance is given by QL divided by work. And like we talked in the previous video, if we use the first law of thermodynamics, we can show that Q hot, the thing that's being rejected, or Q high, has to be equal to work plus QL. Yeah. So I can substitute things in there, and I can have this as, okay, so this is the same thing as QL divided by Q hot minus QL, right? And if I want to take, if I derive, uh, not derive, sorry, if I divide the whole expression on the top and bottom by QL, so if I take QL, QL, I'll be the same thing as multiplying and dividing by 1, right? It's doing the same thing on top and bottom. So I can do that without changing the equation, and that's going to give me 1 over here. On the bottom, I'm going to have Q hot divided by QL minus 1 as well. Okay, so that's another way of finding out our coefficient of performance. And because this is a reversible, completely reversible refrigerator, and only because of this, okay, we can also substitute, we can, uh, we, there's a, an equivalence between the heat, the high heat and the low heat, and the limiting temperatures on the reservoirs. So we can substitute this because it's reversible, and I want to actually stress this out, let's put it here, because reversible, okay, so there's no irreversibilities, the there's no increase in entropy in this change here, then this is also equivalent to T of the high reservoir, T of the low reservoir. Okay, and these both in Kelvin, right? And watch out for that, okay? Because this has to be in Kelvin, and that's a very common mistake students make is precisely forgetting to put this in Kelvin. If the in this case here we would get we got our temperature in Kelvin from the start from the problem statement, but sometimes it's in Celsius, and then it's very easy to forget that this needs to be in Kelvin. So we have our hot reservoir 300. We have our cold one at 250. 
This is both Kelvin and Kelvin, so they go away. This is one, and this gives me five. This, this, this is five. Okay, so the coefficient of performance of this refrigerator is five. What does that mean, right? So for every unit of energy that I put into the refrigerator with my work, I'm going to get five units of energy out of my QL, right? Remember that the question is precisely asking us what is QL. So we just found out that coefficient of performance is five, and we know that it's the QL we're trying to get divided by what we're going to put in, which is work. We have all this information, right? So therefore, QL will just be five times what I'm trying to put in. So not what, what I'm trying to put in, what I am putting in, which is work. In this, in this case, it's 10 kilowatts. So I get 50 kilowatts out of this cold environment that I'm trying to keep cold, right? So I would like you to do this problem on your own, hopefully from scratch without even looking up anything. The only thing you're going to have to remember is that this can only happen, this change from the heat into the temperatures can only happen if we have a reversible system. If we don't, then that's not true. Okay. Other than that, it's just a matter of understanding and remembering how the coefficient of performance or the efficiency, quote unquote, of a refrigeration, refrigerator, refrigerator works, and then just following logic steps. I hope this was useful. If it was, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you're up to date with all the videos that we're putting out. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. All right. Talk soon.